Good morning. I'm Phoebe. I'm a GIS analyst and developer at Spatial Dev here in Seattle. And uh, I'll be talking about using OpenStreetMap data with OpenTrip Planner to create meaningful uh, spatial analysis in developing parts of the world. So I wanted to start out by highlighting uh, a use case that really spurred our interest in OpenTrip Planner uh, in the first place. And that is financial services and their importance in places like Kenya, Uganda, and India. Researchers have found that uh, one of the best ways to enable a person to transition out of poverty is to enable them, uh, it's to ensure that they have access to a financial service, um, like a commercial bank or a mobile money agent. And this allows for saving, borrowing, uh, receiving payments, and other banking services that are essential to maintaining a business and personal savings. Um, so to study the current status of financial access, we really need data like uh, the locations of financial services, uh, high, resolution, high resolution population data, um, and uh, to really understand this. However, in areas like these, uh, data is often reported at a very high uh, country level, and uh, spatial data is often pretty limited. Uh, here, for example, you can see that the standard measure of financial access, uh, this is from 2009, it's uh, reporting the number of ATMs per 100,000 people um, for each country. And this is very high level and almost a little bit of a crude measurement um, if you really want to understand financial service access on the ground. Not to mention, we're not working with any spatial data. However, recently there's been a large amount of financial data being collected um, thanks to organizations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's Financial Services for the Poor Initiative um, and the Hot OSM team. Um, we now have some really great, detailed, precise financial data to work with. For example, uh, the Hot OSM team just completed a pilot project collecting financial locations in Uganda. Um, so here in Overpass Turbo, we can see uh, a large number of financial locations they collected. Um, and so, you know, just looking at Southeast Uganda, um, we can see here that there's a lot of potential data to work with. And so we can use this data to create maps like these to give us a better standard measure of financial access. Um, here we're measuring the number of people living within five kilometers of a financial service location. And uh, this is done by generating a Euclidean distance buffer around each financial point, usually five kilometers, um, and then calculating the total population living within the union of these uh, buffers. So this measure is a lot more uh, spatially nuanced than the tabular data that we were looking at of ATMs per capita from 2009. Um, however, although this is definitely an improvement, um, we wanted to get even more detailed than that. Uh, we wanted to know how long it takes someone to walk to a financial service considering elevation, obstructing water bodies, and uh, roads someone will take while walking. So we basically wanted a smarter buffer, uh, something that most closely aligns with the urban planning term walk shed. Um, <laughs> and we noticed that a lot of these points tend to be located uh, along roads mapped in OpenStreetMap. Uh, which you can kind of see here in this screenshot of all these purple financial points uh, on top of an OSM base map. And we actually measured the distance from each financial point to the closest OSM road. And we saw that uh, the majority of points are about 500 meters from a road. So knowing this, we really began to consider using OpenStreetMap road data to help us better understand financial access. So we started exploring Open Trip Planner, which is a transportation planning service created by routing experts who specialize in OSM data. So one of the best examples of Open Trip Planner is this TriMet Public Transportation Planner in Portland, uh, which is completely powered by OTP or Open Trip Planner. But what enticed us most about Open Trip Planner was its analyst web services. Uh, this is what could help us create a better measure of financial access. Um, so what we're looking at here are travel time isochrones, or basically polygons of areas that can be accessed within the same amount of time from a starting coordinate. 
So in this map of Nairobi, Kenya, it takes 20 minutes to get from the blue marker to the lighter red area, and 40 minutes to get from the blue marker to the darker purple area, for example. So I'm going to dive into the workflow of how to create isochrones like that using Open Trip Planner, which is basically outlined in these five steps. We're going to download our Open Trip Planner components, build a graph, uh, configure our OTP instance, get our GeoJSON polygon data, and then pull it into QGIS to do some cool analysis. So Open Trip Planner has great documentation for basic usage and starting up an instance, uh, but the main things to know are that it's written in Java. Um, it can run on pretty much any platform with a Java virtual machine. Um, it's distributed as a single runnable jar file. So that's the first thing we need to do. We need to download this jar file, which we can get from the documentation. So the next thing to do is to get an OpenStreetMap extract. Um, I sometimes use Geofabric on the left or bbike.org on the right. Um, MapZen also has some great extracts available to download. Um, and so we're looking at cutting an extract of OpenStreetMap data, and it can range anywhere from a town to an entire country. Uh, so once we have our OSM extract, we'll need to create an Open Trip Planner graph, which we can see here in this really cool visual that Brandon Martin Anderson created. He's also created the Open Trip Planner graph server. Um, so this is basically a rendering of a growing shortest path tree uh, on, on a street grid in Seattle. Um, you can see I-90 and the Burt Gilman are kind of thicker branches. I believe this is uh, routing biking trips. Um, so when we build an open trip, or when we build a graph in Open Trip Planner, uh, we are basically using the OpenStreetMap extract that we downloaded, and we're interpreting that as a street grid made up of vertices and edges. Um, so Open Trip Planner's graph server will, will use these vertices and edges to route the most efficient trip from point A to point B. So before we can start up an OTP instance, we have some configuration options. Um, there's a JSON config file to dictate things like factoring in an elevation data set. Uh, and if we're using transit data, we can set limits on, for example, drive time to a park and ride, um, and a lot of other detailed options. Um, I also want to mention that o uh, an OTP instance has several of what are called routers. Um, these are specific independent regions like Portland or King County. Um, and here in this file structure, you can see they're using MYC and PDX. Um, so each router has its own subdirectory, and uh, Open Trip Planner can be used. Um, so all of these routers can be used in the same Open Trip Planner instance. Uh, so with that in mind, if we want to incorporate elevation data, we simply store a geotiff of SRTM data in one of our router subdirectories, and Open Trip Planner will scan for this geotiff file when it's building a graph. Um, so for areas outside the, the US, if we want to get some elevation DEM data, um, a good way to get that is um, Derek Watkins' SRTM tile grabber um, on the right, which makes it really easy to download only the tiles of areas you need um, rather than global data set. So assuming we have built and saved our graph in Open Trip Planner, in our Open Trip Planner directory, um, and we have configured our elevation data, we can start up our Open Trip Planner server locally and start making routing requests. So this is what it looks like. Um, here's our web client with a, a nice map interface. Um, and we've now spun up a working Open Trip Planner instance. So we're now ready to start creating some travel time analysis, like these isochrones. Uh, the OTP analyst service used for different types of travel time analysis um, uses the same routing library and data that we saw when we were making routing trips. Um, so using OTP's API, we can generate travel time isochrones based on several parameters, like uh, starting coordinate, walk speed, uh, cutoff seconds, which determine those colored polygons that we saw. Um, and our response from the server will be a geojson of these isochrone polygons. 
So here's a quick and dirty example of generating isochrones using the OpenTrip Planner API and dynamically rendering them on a leaflet map. So this is in Nairobi, Kenya, and we're using cutoff seconds of 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, all the way up to 50 minutes. Um, and using the same GeoJSON that we are rendering on this leaflet map, we can also save the GeoJSON output and pull it into QGIS. So here we can begin to uh, use these isochrones as just vector polygons, and we can do things like zonal statistics and cool cartography. Um, and so I'll mention a couple different ways um, to use these isochrone polygons for GIS analysis, particularly with financial service data. Uh, so in this example, uh, we can see here the stark difference between your, our regular buffer analysis in the, the light pink and the smarter buffers or isochrones in red. So we can start to see that the number of people within access uh, for, in this example of an ATM in Uganda is uh, very overestimated when we're using the regular buffer analysis compared to isochrones. Um, another thing to note is that we're using, our units are in minutes and hours rather than kilometers when we're working with isochrones. So that can give us a better idea of what is considered walkable. Uh, here, uh, rather than just using one isochrone like in the previous example, we're using several. So we have 20 minute, 30 minute, and 60 minute isochrones for all commercial banks in Kenya. Um, and uh, we're using them to find how much of the population is within walking distance. So um, using several isochrones like this allows us to uh, see how access varies with walk time. So in this example, we can look at how complementary financial services relate to one another. Um, so we're looking at Uttar Pradesh, India, and the yellow point is an agro dealer, right, kind of in the center of the map. Um, agro dealers tend to be located near financial services, uh, which they use for business transactions. Um, and in the table, we can see that financial services are broken down by type, like ATM and commercial banks. Uh, within each walk time interval. So using this type of travel time analysis, we can look at not only where financial services are, but also how they relate to other services. So the advantages are definitely clear. We have, um, you know, creating smarter buffers, using open trip planner isochrones are detailed. They're as up to date as the latest OpenStreetMap extract but the analysis is only as good as its underlying data. Um, we're faced with some challenges when uh, using this tool in areas that don't have a lot of uh, map data in OSM. So for example, you can see here in rural Tanzania, uh, there's not been a lot of OSM data mapped. Um, Open Trip Planner relies on its underlying road network to route trips, and without a road network, you can't create isochrones. Um, but there are a few things we can do to mitigate this issue. So one way is to basically augment the max distance from a starting coordinate to the closest road. Uh, the default max distance in Open Trip Planner is set to 1,000 meters. And if you were to increase this, that would mean that you could choose your starting coordinate. And uh, if it was over 1,000 meters from the closest road, Open Trip Planner would still be able to snap your starting coordinate to the nearest street edge, and you'd still be able to create results. Um, another option is to just go ahead and map the missing roads in OpenStreetMap by uh, tracing roads using satellite imagery. Um, here's an example on the left of um, a road in Tanzania that we digitized and added to OpenStreetMap um, in order to basically create a basic road network in the area that we were working in. With this approach, however, um, you know, we're missing a lot of OSM tags that um, you would see in urban areas on roads, like road speed, road surface, um, and several other factors that feed into Open Trip Planner. Uh, but overall, we have the ability to get a much more granular, precise picture of financial access in the developing world by using OpenStreetMap and Open Trip Planner. Um, so here are some great uh, useful resources to that kind of talk more about this topic. And uh, thanks so much.